Ask, you, you, you ask me questions. Yeah, we're with um, Possible Parker, a gentleman I knew a long time ago when growing up as a youth in Mova. Um, maybe yeah, he seemed to have a full repertoire of um, expertise, so Pussy, maybe you need to let the public know from your. Yeah, this is based on a Mova Love magazine, so. Most of the contents, we want to hear your move on, how you feel about move on, your development in your life. But first off, let me mention to you that I have been helping or contributing a lot to the schools, the secondary schools in, in Trinidad and today, mostly in Trinidad. Every single year since 2002, I've been given 40, 40 scholarships every year. I lecture to four schools every year and give them 10 scholarships, scholarships each to my business, Institute of Broadcasting Careers. I went to MOVA on three occasions. I went to Russell Latterby School. I went to MOVA AC, but I went to Russell Latterby School. I tried making contact with the vice principal. She had been waiting for about 20 minutes one day and I left. And the other day she couldn't see me, or that call, to, to talk to the kids in Mova. Um, I had to say that first start with that because... What I school is that? Uh, Russell Lafayette School? School? All right, okay. And that's they just class. called me okay. a month ago. I'm not the principal or vice principal. They called me to lecture in the school, I think next Wednesday or Thursday. And I don't get my girl shut me. But because what I do, I'm gonna rile them up. I'm gonna rile them up on a career guidance day. Mm -hmm. And then offer them scholarships in my school. And these scholarships cost 3,005 each. And they need it. And yeah. so, but I, I, start, I started with MOVA because I was there. MOVA had the first community center built in Trinidad and Tobago. And it was not government funded, it was self help. Mm -hmm. And only now, they renovated that. I don't know what's happening, but anyway, that's beside the point. So let me tell you uh, what's happening. So, um, as I say, to, to come parallel with um, what seeing them producing the magazine, parallel with from a youth, you were there. Um, if I remember correctly, you were talented with the piano. Yes, I used to play the keyboard from at a young age, maybe from eight, eight years old, and. <laughs> My mother had this guy coming to give me lessons and I, um, Devoney, Mr. Devoney, used mm -hmm. to fall asleep and I was bored. <laughs> and then she, I told her I don't want him to teach me anymore. She sent me by one of the ex-headmasters in the Mr. Johnson. His wife used to teach piano lessons up near Redwood Street. It was the street built right on his own, I'd say it's really. Yeah, yeah. One of those. Yeah. And she used to be out in the yard washing. No, it's C. C E G. You know, mm. you know? And I didn't like that, so I branched off on my own and I started playing by ear. The first tune I learned to play was Valerie, Valara, Valara, la, la. The happy I think Wonder I remember Wonder. that. Yeah, and, and, and all these things. And I started, so I stopped reading music. Sorry. But I got married. I left my home at 16. Okay, what year was that? Uh, well, I'm 71 now, so I just managed to tell you, 1960, 1962, let me see, let me, let me make sure, I got married in 1965, that was 19. And that was abroad? No, I got married in China. China. Uh, but it, it, so you probably late 60s then, you left China? I left Trinidad in 1969. Yeah. That's I got married in 1965 at 90, so 1962 is when I, uh, I stopped playing the piano. Mm -hmm. And if you want the story, let me get, let me get the story quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I left my mother, I, I, I got an accident when I was 13, right? Most people would remember that. Yeah, yeah. broke up my leg. Mm -hmm. And I remember when the guys and I were going out to meet girls. I used to walk up and drop. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, and yeah. I had to use what Just I had. What happened is I used to go to the movies and listen to what the guys were saying to the girls. Mm -hmm. 
I said, memorize it and come back and talk to the chicks. <laughs> they would say, uh, one day a girl asked me, you went away? I said, yes, I've traveled. <laughs> 15 years ago, I'd go home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't play football and cricket, as you'll remember. Um, and I used to play table tennis uh, for therapy in the hospital and, and riding stationary bikes and stuff to get mm -hmm. my knee to bend. Still can't bend all the way. So after the, the stint with the waiting job, the prostitute joint, I, I started drinking. I was drinking and getting drunk every night. I used to make five dollars a week with plenty tips. Mm -hmm. um, and after that, we'd go down to Port of Spain, uh, Shallow Street, and some of the clubs and gamble. 25, mm -hmm. was 25 cents. What I remember when you got live. I yeah. wasn't sure where you were into, but yeah. you got live. Um, I've been helped a lot in Mova, though. I had joined a group called Mova Literary and Culture Group with Ralph Campbell and Newman Brown and those guys. Those guys are yeah. the guys. PGN, they were involved in that as well. And I had a stint in acting, and I liked that. Added to that, I used to go around with Lord Funny and those guys. Mm -hmm. Carolyn is what we used to call it. <laughs> used to be Carolyn all yeah. the I used to be hiding in the background because, you know, I can't sing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As faith would have it, um, when I got married, though, um, I used to live in Belmont. And then I went by my mother-in-law to live. It didn't work out. I went by my mother-in-law to live. It didn't work out. And I put my wife by her mother in Belmont. And I stayed in Mova. We even lived in Chenepo for a little while. I stayed in Mova and it took me one year to save $400. So I gambled today, I went $3, I will to put it in the bank. I make some tips, I put it in the bank. $400. Okay, yeah. subject. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who are listening to the interview, um, this is a footnote that this gentleman has a broadcasting. Um, what's the name of your broadcasting? It's Institute of Broadcasting Careers. And, and you are it's teaching. the very first in the Caribbean. All right. So just to keep that in perspective with the thing, this is coming from down and, and building himself up. So yeah, we're in the video. Okay, I'm ready to go. Okay. Good morning, it's now 7.45 and time for the news read by Percy Parker Williams. How are we going to take you with that? A bit stiff. Yeah, you don't want to be stiff. Even though you get in your grammar position, you don't want to be stiff. Good morning, I'm Percy Parker with the latest news. You talk normal is like, girl, let me tell you something now. You understand? You're making the normal moments you're supposed to make. She mad. No, no. You never say, she mad, I want to she. <laughs> you have to be Yes, you have to show, you have to, you have to be real. You're acting, but we're living it. Yeah. It says, oh, I'm supposed to be in the, in the, in the camera. But then you look in the camera, everyone would see you. Good morning, I'm Percy Parker, with the latest news. Good morning, Parkerans, with the latest news. It's now 7.45, and time for the news read by Percy Parker Williams. See, but my hands are My hands are not doing anything here now. And you can't sit there. So, they created props. You're not going to be reading anything from here, because if you have a teleprompter in front of you, you didn't put that up and say that either, right? And it's going to be, Good morning, thank you for joining us. I'm Percy Parker, with the latest news. Looks a little more professional. Mm -hmm. yeah? Sometimes, sometimes they don't want you to this because it's there. Sometimes they might put the news in case that breaks down. Mm -hmm. And so and so. Uh, blah, 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 right? And then they added something else. Added a pen. So it's going to be like, Good morning, it's now 7.45. We're trying to have the news. We're going to see Parker Williams. Today, so and so happened to do this and that and the other. Yeah. Moving one page of time, you know. Then get a shift to And so and so, this and that and the other. Once you're working together, you're on power. Doesn't matter how young you are. Good morning, I'm Percy Park with the latest series, but before that, I have a lesson with the eyes you can hear my brain. Which one is my lesson? That one, yes. And here's my lesson. Before the news, here's my lesson with that report. My lesson was a report today, it was the weather line. Yeah? And I'm a man, she said, she would do this. But Percy, you're going to have some showers in St. James, and it's going to drizzle off down in the swamps. Yes, folks, and she posted the people there. She just talks to me first. You're going to have some showers, thunder showers coming down. And yes, folks, walk with your umbrellas because so and so you. You just start off with where you're going to the people now. Yes, some expressions. You're watching the camera, watch, watch the TV screen. Good morning. I'm Percy Parkins, and you need to see it. 
I see everything. C'est vrai bien. Don't do any rational. Then you're going to trip. You're going to see it. So you have to be cool. You want to get to Germany, so I'm going to see Balkans and the latest news. Yeah? You understand the attitude? The call has been made, some of the major organizations in Trinidad and Tobago, to embark on their own program of dispensing national awards. Now, here it is. It's now 7.45, and not and time for the news. The word is and. So you can go. It's now 7.45, and time for the news. Read by Lucy Barker Williams. Attitude to all. all. And billing yourself all the time. You're going to see somebody on TV who like, who you'd like to be. Follow them. Follow them. They want to get the and so on. Let's do this. Which brings me the big um, story. I put my wife to live by her parents in Belmont. I live by my mother in law. I saved the $400. Then I went to St. Croix, Virgin Island. I got a job as a security officer. I remember that, yeah. Got a job as a security officer. Um, while working there, I got a green card. I left the security, went to work in Hesse Wells. Well, I sent for my wife in four months. Um, and then we went to the States. I uh, got a job as a messenger, 75 dollars a week. Uh, Brooklyn? Uh, in New York, in New York City. Yeah, New York. Oh. I lived in Brooklyn, but I got yeah. a job in New York City. I got a job um, in the walls, on Wall Street, New York City Community. No, New, uh, American Foreign Insurance Association, as a messenger. I didn't like America then because it was very cold and damp. And nonetheless, I got an opportunity to write in their magazine, the stories and stuff. And that assisted me because I always wanted to write. Mm -hmm. And then I left there. I went to uh, New York Hans City Corporation, a brokerage firm. The computers were big like tables. <laughs> but I was punching cards and stuff in it. And then they were moving to New Jersey. And I, when, I, when, I, when I was with the first company, American Foreign Insurance Association, as a messenger, I wanted to go to college. And because nobody in my family ever been to college, and a, a, a white girl told me, um, you just have to go and take the test. Uh, and she hooked up an interview for me with I can't remember the name of the school right now. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I took the test, it was simple, and I passed it. And I enrolled at New York City Community College for Art and Advertising Design. And I stayed two semesters, and I left. And I came where I was working with New York and Seattle Corporation. They were moving to New Jersey. I didn't want to go to New Jersey. So I stayed there, and I got a, until they were there, and then I got a job at Chase Manhattan Bank on Water Street, which is in the Water Street area, mm -hmm. as a bookkeeping supervisor. Um, and, and based on you think you now your educational background assisted you in, in yeah, but it's, it's much more. It's more because when I when I when I was working with Chase Manhattan Bank, I enrolled with the School of Visual Arts. So you continue to yeah, I, 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 I went to write and voice commercials, and then um, I left there. I didn't graduate from that two semesters as well. But I, I enrolled with RC Television and CGS Television Directing Production and Studio Operations. I graduated from that school. And I landed my job in advertising to a friend, Steve Arthur. He was with me up to last night. Oh, okay. And if it wasn't for Steve Arthur, I wouldn't be here. Is he, he based here or is he in and he's a, He lives in Atlanta now. He's retired. The last place he worked was NBC. But he got me a job in an advertising, an ad, a nice advertising agency, the man. One of the guys who went out did the, the commercials for, for Volkswagen. And I worked there, and boy, it was, it was a thrill. Yeah. I came back here in 1969, in 1979. I got a job at Kilbalani, I stayed with them four months. And in what, what area, what field? Um, creative field. All right. Yeah, okay. doing yeah. the ads for what Kilbalani's were selling. Okay. Roy Boyk and Hans Hanuman and Singh hired me. I left them in four months, and I went to Christensen and Belgrave, where I launched Mario's Pizza. They never looked back. And I worked on the whole stick on some of things. You and launched Mario Pizza? Yeah. Okay. I did the entire thing okay. while working with Chris yeah. and Yeah. And then a company was calling me for five weeks. 
and I wouldn't reply to them. And one of the girls looking at me, Liz Gooding, who's from Mova, and her husband is Eddie Gooding, who's from Mova. So yeah, yeah, I know Gooding, yeah, it's the Gooding. Yeah. The government minister, yeah. no, government, we work with the government now, the Senate or some shit, I don't know. She said, Percy, these people have been calling for five weeks. Why don't you go and see what I want? I said, I don't want to work for anybody else. She said, you should go and see what I want. So I went, I went to the people. It was Corbyn Communications, it was Corbyn Captain at the time. And a woman said to me, big white woman, she said, we've been um, calling for five weeks. Why did you come? I said, I don't want to work for anybody else. She said, why are you here? I said, I'm just curious. She said, um, if you wanted to work with, if we wanted you to work for us, what would you want? I said, I want my own office. I want to be in charge of all the creative writing going out of here. Um, I want to have my own phone. I want a trip, one, at least one trip to New York, to the States every year. And I want car loans, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know what you want, anyways. And I told the salary, and they said, well, no problem. So, I stayed so they, they call you uh, the year. I, I stayed with them for a year and I decided to move out to come here in Belmont and I wouldn't build it over my own. So you actually wanted to establish yeah. yourself? Yeah, because they were too slow here. Yeah. I don't come from the States. Yeah. yeah. And the big, big Apple. Yeah. You know. yeah. While I was working with her, I did a commercial with a guy called a Calisonian called, called Brigo. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. dead to the flies and dead to the roaches. When I was leaving, the woman said to me, I want to come and work for you. The same woman hired me. I said, I can't pay you. She said, you pay me, don't worry. She said, anybody who put a black person in com commercial and make it successful, I want to work with them. Apparently, it was the first black person in a commercial and trying to be, right? 30 years ago. Prior to that, we only had light-skinned people. Oh, okay. And prior to that, only light-skinned people working in insurance companies, banks, and those kinds of yeah. advertising agencies. But since they had that, the 1970s. Yes. Yeah, I can people. tell you about that one. Okay. okay yeah. So, I've been credited with having the, putting the first black person in an advertising agency, uh, making it successful. I've had that client for 30 years, almost. I had three clients for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. I came on my own and then I, I landed a job with, I, I got a client with Pennywise. I made them number one. I sing all the Pennywise commercials. Girls. Girls, girls, shop at Pennywise. I, I made them number one in the Caribbean. Um, I have the oldest commercial in the air right now. It's about 20 or 29 years. This is the season to be happy. Open up your eyes. Yeah. So, uh, shop at Pennywise. I, uh, I, I joined the Rotary Club through Joe Pires, the old man Joe Pires, who won Caribbean Chemicals. And he bring me in the Rotary, he asked me to do an ad for him. I did three hours and he accepted it all. He said, he seemed like a good man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he bought, I said, this is a lodge or something, I don't want to be involved. He said, no, it's not a lodge, come. And I joined Rotary, and there was a guy in there, Oscar Francois. He said, well, I just bring in a new Vasadi, a new arm, petroleum jelly boy. I don't even could advertise it for me. I said, let me see it. I asked him for the information. And I launched it. It's the first time in the world another petroleum jelly has bypassed the facility. That caused Johnson & Johnson to close their business here and go back to the state. And they give you all, all their products to hand down all Pennywise. What's the name? What's the name? Johnson & Johnson? No, the oh, one that... The man said, Decares, I, I name it Decares. I said, Decares? I said, no, Decares, McDonald's, Decares. He said, I dropped the McDonald's. Because my mother used to buy that promenade or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or probably yeah. or whatever. I said, um, I, I went in and I, I did something, I said. I grew up with a guy who, there's an income small. I grew up with a guy who couldn't speak, probably had a speech impediment. And his name was Lincoln. Anything started with S, he pronounced it a, a T. Give me a tongue to go. Yeah. Anything started with F, he, he pronounced it a P. So um, if he said, I want a fig, I want a pig. Yeah. So I used to mock him a lot. Yeah, but that was, that was your forte yeah. too, you know. He's a top That was your forte too. Yeah, and um, that's right. And I, a story happened to him that I recreated. He was in his yard. Um, Mr. Sampson was a man who used to go beating people's yard. They didn't have bushwhackers. And his mom left him at home and went to the market on a Saturday morning. Mr. Sampson was beating the yard. And Mr. Sampson had a commotion. 
Ah, mais c'est ça. Oh, God, me t'a me t'a tapé, t'a tapé, t'a tapé, t'a tapé, mais c'est. Le canon a pris. Oh, God, me t'a tapé, ma baby, t'es mené à elle. Oh, baby, ma chérie, c'est génial. Oh, tu t'es donné, 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 tu I don't worry, Lincoln. Because you told me that was the case. You told me that was the case. What would I do? But I could find sexting, sunburn, shopping. It ended up with that. It's not easy at all. I can see clearly now. So that made it. That was big. Yeah, that was big. That was really big. And it shot Vaseline to number one. So I think Johnson & Johnson took back the product from their suppliers. Because they fell asleep. They didn't think about it. Yeah. Um, I've had Angus store also for 25 years. I have billboards in the Lady Young Road and stuff, and they were with me. They still with me. Well, we, we're going to talk about that billboards and the Lady yeah, Young Road. Yeah, some billboards Based you know, on this project, we're yeah. doing because we're doing Mova. So, yeah. Lady so I have several. I have by Valerie Sylvester in her yard. I have two. One is sold. Opposite by La Morel yard, I have one. I have one by Biggie. Yeah, I saw the one yeah. by La Morel. Yeah, yeah I, have, I have several, several billboards. I have one in South. It's not a big thing with me anymore. I just want to relax on my paint. I'm doing lots of nice paintings. So you're willing to give back a little something? And I've always been help given. Help to, help to move on the, to, 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 um, for based on the program I'm doing, which what? is like the history and stuff. I, I, and that's I, the only I, I'm doing yeah. that now, but I don't know how I could contribute again because since I'm, I'm given scholarships and, and, and every time they start something, it falls through. So I, don't, I no longer go What are you giving back right now because what you're doing is showing the type of people that MOVA have because yeah. uh, I've been doing the MOVA thing a while yeah. with the assistance of Victor and because um, there's a stigma. Of course there's a stigma. And, and unless you work on that stigma, it doesn't... I away. don't know. I, I don't know how that... It's not going to get better unless something is done yeah. in terms of whoever is bringing in what they're bringing in and, and mm -hmm. sharing with the black guy. Yeah. The black guy. Yeah. So I'm not seeing it going anywhere soon. Um, but that's just my take. Yeah. Uh, yes, come in. You ready for me? How many people we have? Three people. Three, I'll start with that. Thank you. Yeah. Tell them two minutes. Yeah. So, in contributing, all I can do is try to talk to kids and help them in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see, unless the government intervenes. That's what I want to work on. That's what I want to work on. I know I've been living in the States, I've in the States for 10 years, I'm 69 to 79. And I saw this happening and it just doesn't get better. Because things are going to get worse for poor people. They don't have the money to buy stuff. And, and nobody spends money like poor people. They don't have money to spend more than anybody mm. else. <laughs> don't see the gold teeth and the gold yeah, shape yeah. And, the, and the latest threads and, and all the nonsense. Yeah. So this has to be on a higher level. Not one single big man has been held and condemned for what they're doing, or charge. Yeah, Nobody. Yeah. They're always holding little guys to smoking a joint or, or cussing or some stupid thing. Yeah, yeah. Those guys still into crime. It seems like you're yeah, yeah. yeah. like you getting a little yeah. passionate or a little emotional. No, it's true. It's quite true. Yeah. You know who bringing in the stuff. Every area, and yeah. every area, you know which part the den is. You know where to go and buy something. The police don't know that? Well, um, Percy, I would like to... Thank you for giving me this opportunity to get your background a lot of the things I learned and about you. And um, maybe we can work in some form towards the move and stuff. So yeah, thanks like for, right? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. All right.